Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Shiva Sadhika Abhakta Vinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Anitai Gora Haribo 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 Anitai Gora Haribo Ajaya Jaya Prabhupada 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 Jaya Jaya Prabhupada This morning we will read from the Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, Kapila's instructions on devotional service, text 14 to 16. The first text 14, which is on the board. Yeah. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Narom Cheva Narotanam Devim Sarasvatim Vyasam Tato Jyam Muti Rayet Nastavesya Bhatresu Nityam Bhagavata Sivya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki Lasat Pankaja Kinjalka Lasat Pankaja Kinjalka Pita Koseya Vasasam Shivatsa Vakshanam Rajat 
Kostumba Mukta Kandam The Sat Pankaja King Chalka Pitta Kaseya Vasanam Shrivatsa Vakshanam Bhajat Kostu Bhamukta Kandaram Tasat Pankaja King Chalka Pitta Kaseya Vasasam Shrivatsa Vakshasam Bhajat Kostu Bhamukta Kandaram Lasat Pankaja King Chalka Pita Kaseya Vasanam Shivatsa Vakshanam Brajat Kastu Bhamukta Kandaram Lasat Pankaja King Chalka Pita Kaseya Vasasam Shivatsa Vakshanam Brajat Kastu Bhamukta Kandaram Lasat Pankaja King Jalka Pita Kaseya Vasanam Shivatsa Vakshanam Brajat Kastu Bhamukta Kandaram Lasat Pankaja King Jalka Pita Kaseya Vasasam Shivatsa Vakshanam Brajat Kastu Bhamukta Kandaram Matajis, please. Lasat Pankaja King Jalka Pita Kaseya Vasasam Vishvacha Vakshasam Bajat Kastu Bhamukta Kandaram Lasat Pankaja King Jalka Pita Kaseya Vasasam Shivatsha Vakshanam Vajat Kastu Bhamukta Kandaram What for what translation? Lasat Shining Pankaja Of a Lotus Kinjalaka Filaments Pita Yellow Kaseya Silk cloth Vasasam Whose garments Shivatsa Bearing the mark of Shivatsa Vakshasam Breast Bajat Sorry Bajat Brilliant Kostuba Kostuba Jam Amukta Put on Kandaram His neck Translation and purport by Abhay Charnavinda Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki His loins are covered by a shining cloth yellowish like the filament of a lotus on his breast he bears the mark of Srivatsa, a curl of white hair. The brilliant Kastuba gem is suspended from his neck. Pur purport. The exact color of the garment of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is described as saffron yellow, just like the pollen of a lotus flower. 
The Kastuba gem hanging on his chest is also described. His neck is beautifully decorated with jewels and pearls. The Lord in full the, the, the Lord is full in six opulences, one of which is wealth. He is very richly dressed with valuable jewels which are not visible within this material world. So I will first speak on this first and then on the next and the next. <laughs> Alma Jana Timanla Syat Sanzala Slakya Saksharan Militamya Natas Mai Siku Avainama Chichitaya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutali Swamra Bhagadamyam Dadati Swa Padantika Vandeham Siyu Siyuda Padakam Nam Siyum Vaishnavam Sha Siyupam Jagatam Sagana Raghunatam Vitam Tam Sajivan Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Si Krishna Chitanya Devam Si Radha Krishna Padan Sankana Lita Sivishakam Vitam Sha He Krishna Karuna Sindhudina Bandha Chiyat Pate Kaupe Shakopka Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kansna Gaurangi Radha Vrinda Vanishpri Vrishabhana Sutta Devi Pranamama Hari Priye Vankha Kalpta Visha Kepa Sinvai Visha Patnam Pavana Bhyo Vaishna Bhyo Namo Nama Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Radha Shiva Sati Gaura Bhakta Vinna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Namo Vishnu Padai Krishna Vastaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani Namaste Sarasvata Devi Gaurvani Pacharani Nirvishesa Sunyavadi Paskachai so, this is a beautiful description of the transcendental form in this of the Supreme Lord as residents of in the as residents of the spiritual world see them. Interesting the last line of the purport of this verse. Srila Prabhupada writes, is very richly dressed with valuable jewels which are not visible within this material world. Not visible within this material world. To see the spiritual form of Krishna, we need spiritual vision. <laughs> that... Uh, does described in the Sri Isopanishad that Sri Isopanishad teaches us how to develop this spiritual vision. What is the first thing Sri Isopanishad is uh, teaching us in the invocation already, and especially the first mantra, is the Isavasya principle. To develop spiritual vision you must know what is your own and what is not your own. <laughs> Interesting. Everyone has a quota that uh, we have to learn that Krishna is the owner of everything and therefore the supreme enjoyer. is a Vasya principle. That, uh, and then when we know what's our own and what is not our own then we have to know what's Vidya and Avidya she is upon us that explains and that's explained in three verses and in every verse Vidya and Avidya has a different meaning <laughs> That in the first verse says one must know, have vidya and avidya and, and uh, vidya is worse than avidya. <laughs> that's, that's enigmatic puzzling, this is upon it, 
but what it means is there is uh, there is the innocent pursuit of sun gratification, like most people. That then, uh, yes, and that's a video. But then, many people in this world they use their knowledge, their intellect, to get more and more sense gratification. That's called avidya, <laughs> and that's worse. <laughs> that uh, it's very puzzling. But then it says, yes, one must, in the next verse it's avidya and vidya. Avidya there means knowledge for sense gratification. And vidya in the second mantra there on, on, of this tree, which describe avidya and avidya. Vidya means knowledge for making progress in spiritual life, for making progress in, in Krishna consciousness. So, that, uh, and in the third verse, this, the same meaning is given, avidya and vidya. Avidya is the knowledge for sense gratification, and vidya is the knowledge um, for making spiritual progress. But then the verse is, one must have both. And that's the next step. One must know in this world what is liberated, li what, what leads to liberation and what leads to bondage. And that we learn in Krishna consciousness very quickly. Four regulative principles, that leads to bondage and uncontrolled mind if we are not following them. That, uh, and then we have Vidya the knowledge to become liberated, knowledge how to make progress in Krishna consciousness. So one needs both that, uh, and if one has learned that, one must learn what's sambhuti and asambhuti, puti. Some I remember what it means if you have read she is upon us at Sambuti and Asambuti. No? That, uh, one must know what is supreme and what is not supreme. That's important. And the first verse says, yes, it makes the same thing that, uh, that uh, the worshipping what's not supreme and, and that's and this asambuddhi has, has again three different meanings in in the three verses, following verses. It, it says, yeah, worshipping what's not supreme, worshipping the demigods, that uh, asambuddhi. But then you have a so called sambuddhi, which worship the imperson impersonal form of the Lord. And the verse says, that's worse. If one worships that supreme, that's worse than uh, worshipping the demigods. <laughs> that, uh, but uh, yes, one must know, finally the third verse of this series, say, one must know what's supreme and what's not supreme. And at the same time. Otherwise, one cannot make progress in Krishna consciousness. So that's required for developing this spiritual vision. And, that, uh, and then, yes, then one, one must know what's the right and the wrong upashan, what's the right and the wrong worship that uh, what is to be worshipped, what is not to be worshipped. That so we need to know what's worshipable. And what worshipable is somebody what's supreme. That, uh, that, uh, and then that means we must know what Krishna is. 
that we, we must know who Krishna is, then we can only know who we are. Then, Shanma Kama Smedi Vyam Yomi Veti Tat Vati Akt Vyam Punama Naitimam Eti Sarina. Krishna said, if you know me in truth, and you know my past and my activities, you don't take birth again. Because if we really know who Krishna is, then we know who we are. And we are servant of Krishna, and then we serve Krishna. And then we don't take birth again, if we are fully engaged in the devotional service. But that is what she, she is upon itself says, but at the end says, all this is not sufficient to see the Lord eye to eye. Because then, in the Shiva's upon us, the spiritual seeker is praying for Ishvara to reveal himself, the Supreme to reveal yourself. He's praying. And, he's, and, and then he's saying, please remove two coverings. Two coverings. We can't see Krishna because of two, two curtains, <laughs> two coverings. Someone remembers these coverings, no? Two coverings. The first covering is called Maya. Heard about that? <laughs> Illusory energy. <laughs> it makes us identify with this body. All, all our anartas are the cause of this Maya, of ident identifying with this body. That's the first covering. And the second covering is, hmm? is, this, is Krishna's spiritual effulgence, the Brahma Jyoti. That, uh, we have to go beyond the Brahma Jyoti to see Krishna. What's the qualification to enter the Brahma Jyoti? It's the Brahma Buddha platform. Pama Buddha Prashana Atmana Nashushni Nakangsiti Samsa Vesabhuja Mat Bhakti Mnabhati Brahm So that's the beginning of spiritual life. But that's not sufficient. You cannot s still, if you are on that, does it begin of the spiritual platform, then you, where you have realized I'm not this body, <laughs> then you have to go beyond it. So, that's described also in Briyad Bhagavatam Rita. Someone has read Briyad Bhagavatam Rita here? Huh? Briyad Bhagavatam Rita is written by Sanatan Goswami. Sanatan Goswami has written two, two pastimes or two stories in this Briyad Bhagavatam Rita. The first story is Narada Muni searching for the most elevated devotee. And he's going from one devotee to another, and one devotee says, No, I'm not the most elevated, you go to this devotee. And, and he goes always. And that's the whole half of the book. And at the end he comes at the residence of Vrindavan. But the other story is the story of of Gop Kumar. Gop Kumar is a simple covered boy is living in here on the earth in Vrindavan and his guru gives him a mantra and said you chant this mantra and by chanting this mantra you will get perfection in life and this mantra is called the Gopal mantra <laughs> That uh, that's, it's a part of our Gayatri mantra. <laughs> that, uh, and he's chanting this mantra, and he's going from one planet to another, all these higher planets, and f finally, he, at a certain moment, he, he becomes Indra, and then, then after that, he becomes Brahma. <laughs> but he gives up the post, and then he goes to the Brahma Jyoti, and he comes into the Brahma Jyoti. And what is the experience when he comes into the Brahma Jyoti? 
it doesn't see anything it's an effulgent light nothing so it's blinded by this light it doesn't see anything the same experience was there when Krishna and Arjun went to see Ma Vishnu to, to retrieve the sons of a Brahman they went also with their transcendental horses through the coverings of the universe and then they came into the Brahma Jyoti and they didn't see anything <laughs> and, and it was a, a bright effulgence and then yes but after some time he started to see something first he heard some things he heard the sound of kirtan <laughs> and he was looking in that bright light and after a long time he could see then he could see lord shiva arriving on a bull met with all his associates chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And they were chanting. And Gop Kumar felt very happy in the Brahma Jyoti, very peaceful. But then he spoke with Lord Shiva and said, why are you doing kirtan in the Brahma Jyoti? Lord Shiva said, we do kirtan to liberate all these impersonalists. <laughs> anyway, Gup Kumar was there for a long time, but very peaceful, but there's nothing to do. Boring. <laughs> so he didn't want to stay there. So the Brahman realization is an intermediate realization. You realize you are not his body. <laughs> but then you have to go further. Realize the Supreme. Realize that you are a servant of Krishna and develop this love for Krishna. Which is easy after liberation. It goes quick. So he, and from there he went to Vaikuntha and then he could see the Lord eye to eye. So we have to go to the same process. So Sina Shisapanasat explains this process to, to develop spiritual vision. First understanding what's your own, what's not your own. <laughs> and then understanding what's knowledge, vidya and avidya what spiritual knowledge, what material knowledge, and then act upon that knowledge, understanding what is supreme, what is not supreme, and then worship what, what is supreme, and pray to the Lord. Please remove your coverings, two coverings, the covering of Maya and the covering of the Brahma That. Uh, Spiritual life begins from Brahman realization, real spiritual life, before we are practicing. It's devotional service in practice before. You know, it's not a real thing yet, but still it's very, it gives satisfaction to our heart. It's like, like a mother and a child and the mother gives this child uh, a toy kitchen. Hmm? And the mother cooks and the, and the child imitates with, with plastic pata chapatis, <laughs> imitating the mother. Hmm? So that is devotional service in practice. That's called, called Vaida Sarna Bhakti. But by doing that, we become purified. And you get already satisfaction from the service. But after becoming purified, after Anartha Nivriti is finished by chanting Hare Krishna with great determination for 30, 40 years, then you become more detached from this world and 
attached to Krishna and then this love starts to develop and then that's called Nishta. Ruchi, you get taste, taste. So what, that, that's another point in this verse is when you get this taste. Yes. When you have seen Krishna, no interest in anything else anymore. <laughs> it's finished, it becomes pale. But, but then when the heart is purified, we come to Ruchi, great taste, and then Ashakti. Krishna reveals himself in our heart. That uh, there's a realization of the yogis. And that's what we are discussing here. They find Krishna in the heart. And that's their meditation. So, but it's not visible within this material world. We have to purify our heart and develop spiritual vision. Okay, text 15. I just read the, the Sanskrit and can follow on the screen. Matta Pakalaya Paritam Vanamalaya Paradyahara Valaya Kiritangadanu Puram. He also wears around his, his neck a garland of attractive sylvan flowers and a swarm of bees intoxicated by its delicious fragrance hums about the garland. His further superbly adorned with a pearl necklace, a crown, and pairs of armlets, bracelets, and anklets. Purport. From this description it appears that the flower garland of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is fresh. Actually, in Vaikuntha or the spiritual sky, there is nothing but freshness. Even the flowers picked from the trees and plants remain fresh, for everything in the spiritual sky retain, re, retains its orig, originality and does not fade. The fragrance of the flowers picked from the trees and made into garlands does not fade, for both the trees and the flowers are spiritual. When the flower is taken from the tree, it remains the same. It does not lose its aroma. The bees are equally attracted to the flowers, whether they are on the garland or on the trees. The significance of spirituality is that everything is eternally, is eternal and inexhaustible. Everything taken from everything remains everything. Or as being stated in the spiritual world, one minus one equals one, and one plus one equals one. The bees hum around the fresh flowers, and their sweet sound is enjoyed by the Lord. The Lord's bangles, necklace, crown, and anklets are all bedecked with invaluable jewels, since the jewels and pearls are spiritual. There is no material calculation of their value. So everything is eternally ever fresh. So we have in the spiritual world we have different laws than here that uh, quite different laws that uh, you have here this spiritual mathematics. In this world, if we look at our body, it goes to six changes. It takes birth, it grows from ta for, for some times, for some, it, and then one, it maintains for some time that uh, we get byproduct children, and then it starts to dwindle. And then there is death. Six changes. But that's not there in the spiritual world. <laughs> that's uh, no change. 
In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says in the second chapter, but what is changing is not really valuable. Only what's unchangeable is valuable. <laughs> so in the material world, no change. Always fresh. Then you have this one plus one is one. One minus one is one. So that is our spiritual mathematics. That uh, like in the Krishna book we have Rukmini. Krishna is teasing Rukmini and said, why did you marry me? I'm a poor man. That uh, I don't have anything. Everything belongs to King Ugrasena. I took shelter in the ocean, afraid of my enemies. And you, you, you had opportunity to marry great ping, kings like Sisupa. <laughs> anyway, we know after that Rukmini fainted. She didn't like the proposal, but then after that, she started to reply to Krishna and said, yes, it's right. You are poor, you can't have anything because you are everything. <laughs> it's difficult to understand for us. This is, Krishna is everything. It's non different from everything because he's a source of everything. At the same time, he's different from everything. That uh, these are spiritual laws. We don't have that experience in this world. That uh, that Krishna is called Vasudev, all pervading. All pervading. He's a person, and at the same time, he's all pervading. We don't have that experience in the material world. This different laws. Interesting is that because one minus one, I have some, something and I give it to someone else, I get rid of it. But on the spiritual platform, that's not the case. We offer food to Krishna, Krishna accepts it, and we get a pra prasadam. We don't lose anything. <laughs> It's still there, that it becomes more valuable, it's prashadam now. And this is a secret, an open secret, which Srila Prabhupada shares with us, that uh, he gave us his mission. What is the mission? To spread Krishna consciousness, to do Harinam, book distribution, very nice. It means we give away Krishna consciousness to others. The more you give away Krishna consciousness to others, the more you will get it. That is spiritual mathematics. That uh, we should always remember that. This is a shortcut for spiritual realization. Try to give Krishna consciousness to others. That's Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that uh, he gives instructions. His, his main instruction in Bhagavad Gita, it, uh, 1865, Man Mana Bhava Mat Bhakta Maji Imam Namaskar Mama Vaisha Sasatyam Te Patichani Priyosimi. Always think of me, right? Think of me and then. Uh, you become my devotee, you worship me, you offer me respect. If you do that, you surely will come to me, Krishna says. In the next verse, he says, Sarvadam Pritya, Mam comes from Tam Tom Sarvapapa, Biomoksisya, Machacha. He says, Give up all other practices, just do that, and I will take care of you. And then we think, yeah, these are the supreme instructions. But no, they continue to 
until verse 69. You have also 67, 68, 69. These are also his supreme instructions. It's not finished. Krishna says, one who studies this uh, dialogue between me and Arjun, he worships me within, with his intelligence. And one should give this knowledge to others, but only, but not to those who are not austere, or not my devotee, or not innocent. And then in the next verse, Krishna says, and there will be no one more dear to me than such a devotee who gives Krishna consciousness to others. These are his supreme instructions. And this, this verse is from 65 till 69. That's our mission. The seven purposes of Iskona are based on that. That's the basis. Srila Prabhupada said our movement is based on the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. That's the mission. That, uh, so that's... Uh, important for all of us if we want to make advancement quickly then we must take to Srila Prabhupada's mission Bhagavad Gita says that also the Bhagavatam says that, says that. One must hear, hear about Krishna with Shadadanasya, with care and attention, Prabhupada translates. And one should do Matseva, serve the mission of the spiritual master. And if you do both, you hear about Krishna and you serve the mission of Krishna's pure devotee, then that will produce taste, taste, attraction to Krishna. That's where the taste comes from. That, uh, so yes, uh, that's spiritual mathematics. Give Krishna's, Krishna consciousness to others. And you get Krishna conscious. So Krishna is ever fresh. That's the other point. You never see a, a picture with Krishna becoming old. He grows until he gets the Yavana age. And then he doesn't grow older, older anymore. <laughs> that is because that is his eternal form. That, uh, yes, yes. And Krishna is unlimitedly fresh, always fresh, unlimited. That's like, where can we, we don't have the idea in this world of something which is unlimited, in, without limits. Of course, in mathematics we have, we have all the, all the odd numbers, all the, all the even numbers. <laughs> that uh, of all the prime numbers it's without end that uh, but even when you take out the even numbers and all only the odd numbers remains still it remains eternal in unlimited i mean that uh, mm -hmm. good we have still one verse to go 16 Kanshigo nalla sakshonim redayam bhoja vishtaram tarsani yantanam santam manonayana vardhanam His loins and lips encircled by a girdle. He stands on the lotus of his devotee's heart. He's most charming to look at, and his serene aspect gladdens the eyes and souls of the devotees who behold him. Purport. 
The word darsaniyatamam, which is used in this verse, means that the Lord is so beautiful that the devotee yogi does not wish to see anything else. His desire to see beautiful objects is completely satisfied by the sight of the Lord. The material world, we want to see beauty, but the desire is never satisfied. Because of material contamination, all the propensities we feel in the material world are ever unsatisfied. But when our desires to see, hear, touch, etc. are dovetailed for the satisfaction of the Supreme Personality of God, it, they are on the level of the topmost perfection. Although the Supreme Personality of God it, in his eternal form is so beautiful and pleasing to the heart of the devotee. It does not attract the impersonalist who want to meditate on his impersonal aspects. Such impersonal meditation is simply fruitless labor. The actual yogis with, with half-closed eyes fix on the form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, not upon void or impersonal that... Uh, so, yes. There are different points here. If we become attracted to the Lord, we feel satisfied. That is a symptom of fun with spiritually advanced is always satisfied in every situation because of his constant engagement in the service of the Lord, feeling satisfied. Of course, that's people want to satisfy their lust in their in this in this world that Avitam Jnanam Etena Jnanaka Janinan Nityavainam. Yeah. Yeah, Gama Rupa, yeah, Dusparanan Alinacha. We try to satisfy this lust, but it's never satisfied. People want only more and more and more. Already twenty years ago they did um an uh, a survey with billionaires. They had all at least one billion dollars at that time. And the question was, you have one billion dollar, what do you want? The answer was practice everywhere. I want two billion dollars. <laughs> they want more. They want always more more and more, never satisfied. Dusprenon alenasha. Camera pain account ya dusprenon alenasha. Never satisfied. That I, I remember in the 60s, the Rolling Stones, you ain't get satisfaction. <laughs> that was. Uh, a popular pop song that uh, you never get full satisfaction in this world. It will always, always end up in frustration. Unless we take to the service of Krishna. That, uh, so, this satisfaction is explained, explained, explained in the Bhagavad Gita. The nine Machita Machata Prana Buddha Janta Pashvam Gadi and Samamnitam Tushanta Sharanta Tushanti Sharamanti Cha Tushanti Satisfied Ramanti they feel blissful that uh, just by speaking and conversing about Krishna they feel blissful in the purport Srila Prabhupada writes, 
In the beginning of our dev devotional service, one must be satisfied with the service itself. With the, that, uh, and in the advanced stage, one becomes ecstatic, blissful. But in the beginning, one will be satisfied with one's service. That's the characteristic, even for the neophyte, if we proper, properly perform devotional service with the right inner attitude, correct inter inner attitude, you feel this satisfaction. That, uh, that satisfaction is there. But therefore, to attain that satisfaction, we must dovetail our psychophysical nature in the service of Krishna. Bhagavad Gita explains there are two svadharmas, material svadharma and a spiritual svadharma. Material svadharma means one's natural tendencies within the modes of nature that one has gotten from Krishna from birth, which are a reaction of our previous activities. But, but these are um, material likes and dislikes. So we should learn to do for Krishna what, uh, what we like to do for Krishna. When a devotee asked Prabhupada and said, Prabhupada, that uh, I want to serve you. Ask me anything you want to do, I will do it. And Papa's reply was, well, what do you want to do for Krishna? Prabhupada said. And the devotee said, Prabhupada, it doesn't matter. Ask me anything, I will do it for you. And Prabhupada became more grave and said, Try to understand our philosophy. What do you want to do for Krishna? And the devotee said, Oh, Prabhupada, I want to make unbreakable Mridangas. And Prabhupada said, Yes, do that for Krishna. And he made this glass fiber for Mridangas, which we are using still today, that uh, so it's important to be engaged according to your nature, but do it for Krishna. And that is what Prabhupada says, is dovetail our desires in the service of Krishna, and you will become fully satisfied. You see many, and Prabhupada encouraged that. that uh, you see that beautiful painting, which was made from our, of, some of, of, of uh, Lord Sita, of Sita Ram, which was made by one of our artists. And they used their tendencies, their, their, their gifts from Krishna, their, their uh, capabilities in the service of Krishna. That's important. When we, when we are engaged according to our nature, we will feel materially satisfied and spiritually satisfied. That, uh, and later, when, when we become purified, then we can do anything for Krishna. But still, we continue according to our nature to teach others. So that's a very important aspect of our philosophy which is described here in this verse, that uh, the dovetailing aspects, that the term dovetailing comes from the carpentry, there are two pieces, one with, with holes in, and, and the other comes something out, and it fits perfectly into, into, into each other. That's dovetailing. So we use our material qualities in the service of Krishna. That, uh, and by that our service becomes a, 
a meditation on Krishna because we do it for Krishna. In the purport here, Srila Prabhupada said, one can not meditate on the void. <laughs> it's not possible. You cannot empty your mind. The mind must be attached to something. But we have to transfer attachment. Prasangam acham prasam atmana kavyovito saiva sadhusukrito muksatvaram anavitam. 325.25. Kapila Dev telling. Attachment to the material, to material things is entanglement of the spirit soul. But that same attachment transferred to the sadhu, to following the instructions of the sadhu, is the path of liberation. So we must transfer our attachment, the, our desires, our attachment. Krishna consciousness is a changing of desire. That. And these verses say, says, when you have seen Krishna, you don't desire to see anything anymore. I was just reading yesterday the Chit Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila, chapter 2, where Lord Chaitanya's ecstasies as Srimad Radharani are described. Of course, I cannot speak on such a subject matter, but uh, what appears from that is, because Lord Chaitanya in his ecstasy started to chant so many verses spoken by Srimad Radharani, or in the mood of Srimad Radharani. One verse is, is from, um, um, from Krishna Karanamrita, yeah, from uh, Bilva Mangal Thakur. And is a verse spoken by Srimad Radharani, he says, well, If I can't see Krishna, what's the use of these eyes? Better, better to die immediately <laughs> than, than see something else, uh, else than Krishna. That, uh, there are also verses described in uh, in the yeah that's in the second canto third chapter does this very heavy verse svavit vra hostra karai samsuta prasapasu nat karma pato peto Yatunama Gadagaja, men who are like dogs, hogs, camels, and asses, praise those men who never listen to the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. See Krishna, the deliverer from evils. Hmm. That uh, purport. The general mass of people, unless they are trained systematically for a higher standard of life and spiritual values, are no better than animals, and in this verse, they particularly have been put on the level of dogs, hogs, camels, and asses. <laughs> anyway, that was the feeling of Lord Chaitanya. If, if I cannot see Krishna, then what is the use of these eyes? The gopis said the same thing, that uh, they were very unhappy that Brahma had made eyelids that blink. Because that moment they don't see Krishna, they feel like that. So once you have seen Krishna, you have no interest in seeing any, anything all, others. And Sutta Goswami is speaking to Maharaj Pariksit. What, what does Pariksit mean? Pariksit means examiner. When uh, Asvatam had thrown a Brahmastra, it have thrown a Brahmastra to destroy the embryo in the womb of um, Uttaram, his mother. And, and Uttara ran, ran to Krishna for protection. And Krishna protected the, the embryo of Maharaj Pariksit that... Uh, and so Maharaj Pariksit transcendentally saw the Lord with his forearms, with his club, <laughs> protecting him in the womb. 
and after birth he was he was always searching that examining everything where is the person that I saw in the womb <laughs> and that was his own life <laughs> that he could not forget after experience that no taste for anyone anything else it's like after eating prashadam you can't eat meat again <laughs> it's finished Hare Krishna, this is the little thing I could say on these verses. Thank you very much. I think we are way over time, I think. Unless there is one urgent question. No. Okay, good. Shantara Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Jai.